it looks like we're back, everybody. I'm going to have to go through and send out the links again, so be patient with me, everyone. I'm not sure what happened there. I clicked on the link that uh, Todd had uh, that had Todd had sent, and it just pooched on me. So I apologize for that. It took me right out of the video chat, and I couldn't get back in. I apologize, but here we are back, and I'm sure we'll all get back here sooner than later. I'll try to find the YouTube chat. I'm not sure if it's going to be there. Let's go find it. All right. Now, where do I get the YouTube link to post it on the YouTube? Um, the YouTube link I just punched in. Oh, there it is. I into Google. I punched in uh, hash church ninety one part two, and it the YouTube thing comes up right away. There it is. And there, there we are. <laughs> hey, welcome back, everyone. Sorry about the uh, technical difficulties, but you know what? That was pretty damn quick to go back live and get you know back to where we are. So let's just make sure that we still have the chat going. Wow, they're all still in the chat. It's like the chat never changed. That's so awesome. Well, let's see us get back to 700 viewers. That'll be the real trick. We're only at 177 right now. We were talking about the raids. We, uh, I mucked up. I'm sorry, everyone. I mucked yeah, that up. Raid, that raid on this. Someone's got their mic really loud. There we go. Um, that, that raid on, on Care by Design was... Uh, a real, a real disappointment because they were actually one of the groups that were doing it right. I visited their facility with Rob Clark and some other folks um, right after the Emerald Cup, and uh, we saw their whole lab and their t they have a tissue culture facility and an analytical lab and uh, their extraction lab. And the extraction lab is all done with CO2, which is actually legal under California law. But uh, I guess somebody had gone to the police and told them that they were extracting with butane, which is actually not legal under California law. And the lawyer said it was a disgruntled employee. So yeah, I heard that too. Always re remember people. You always still have to treat your people with a, a lot of respect, especially in this day and age, because as you can see, this can happen. Now, well, we still don't know if the DA, the DA itself is going to come up with any charges specific. Well, look who's here, Mr. Chris Bennett. Welcome, welcome. Happy Father's Day, everybody. Yeah. Uh, hey, Chris. Happy Father's Day. Yeah. Yeah. Hope everybody's doing good, man. Same to you. Doing Same. really good, man. Just uh, chatting away a little bit about these busts that happened down in uh, California. Yeah, it's uh, pretty scary stuff, you know what I mean? You start to think that everything's stabling out and uh, getting accepted, and then stuff like that happens. Well, the great thing is, is that you know the guy was released. So I mean, it's it's a complete change already from anything we've had in the past. Because from what I was made aware, that group had just had uh, dignitaries uh, through because they're vying for actual permit, and it depends on the city or the county. Um, and in the California wants everybody to be locally licensed before their. Um, uh, receive a state license. So as far as uh, I had heard, they were vying for that and trying to do everything proper. So to hear the bust uh, and their product is very popular, um, bo both their products, uh, the Care by Design products, because it's uh, they have CBD products that are in different ratios and are consistent. And my patients really really like it, as well as the absolute extract, uh, the pens themselves. So happy to hear that they've decided to maintain or continue operations. Uh, we'll see what happens. As far as we know, the DA has not uh, provided any charges at this time. So um, they have up to two years, though. That's the thing. You know, they can, you know, fuck with you, you know, and, and that resolve. Um, so they can have up to two years to charge him with anything, but um, we'll see. They, know. you know, I, th I think in, in court it, it'll really come out that they weren't um, a, a black market drug operation, that they really were going by the book, because they had all this really high-tech equipment there, like doing really, really very, very exact um, gel caps and, you know, CBD to THC mixtures, like you said, in varying ratios that were the same time after time after time again in, in coconut oil. So they, they make a, like a knockoff Sativex that's way, way cheaper than you could possibly get Sativex for on in any pharmaceutical store. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think they're, they're good, they're some good guys and maybe they have some history that came out during the raid, but um, 
you know, I think that when when the police actually get a chance to look at it and, and see their operation, they're going to realize, oh, these guys are actually doing it by the book. So it, it's weird right now because nobody ha these licenses haven't been giving out, given out in California, and there's obviously a whole existing culture and infrastructure of people that produce things. So, so and we won't until 2018, so they're not going to issue any permits until then, So right. uh, unless there's local. And so you've got now local municipalities, or if people aren't aware, you now have local municipalities throughout California who are uh, making uh, laws outlawing uh, access for patients um, in, in areas all over the state. Over 100 different municipalities in California have bans outright that won't allow cannabis. And... Even as they go legal, um, it's if with Alma, the situation is still going to allow for local jurisdictions to either allow or disallow it. It's the same way with alcohol. I grew up in Louisiana, and uh, there was, you know, they're calling parishes in Louisiana as opposed to counties everywhere else. And there were a couple of dry parishes, especially up north, where they didn't even sell alcohol. It was, you know, banned locally there. So it seems they've using this type of manipulation in California to uh, shun uh, you know cannabis out and that's a frustration to many patients because then that drives them to have to literally drive further to get their access to their medicine or even delivery services are outlawed you know even down in LA you saw you know with the, the recent uh, situation with a very popular delivery service down there uh, was shut down because of the laws that they have decided to have in Los Angeles themselves that are draconian and very, you know, prohibitive to business in any way, shape, or form to, you know, expand as these companies are trying to find their niche. See, we're dealing in this gray, black market area until the lights turned on. So everybody's trying to find their foothold, their niche, you know. You know what was crazy at the Cannabis Cup was, I mean, there has to be at least 40 to 50 different pen companies now, and they were all there. I mean, it's amazing how many different pen manufacturers there are. I mean, open up any magazine nowadays that's recent, and you'll see. I mean, they're absolutely everywhere. But how many are actually manufacturing pens, and how many are just rebranding already manufactured pens? 90% are doing that, you know. They yeah. probably all come from the same factory in China, don't they? Probably 90% of them do. 99. Okay. <clears throat> and some of them are uh, really low quality, I've found, as well. Most of them, about the 90%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Omicron's the only one who's really taken it to really raise the standards. Others are trying. Puffco does really well, but the Omicron is really the only one that is solid all the way through. That is replaceable, cleanable. I mean, it's it's a kind of a stone stream. The first one that's yeah. worked for me. Yeah, and uh, besides that, otherwise I just go back to you know manual rigs because I'm tired of my pens breaking all the time. It's a it's a frustration. You know, they're they're cheap and accessible, but what are you actually getting? As you know, Sam showed us when he pulled those pens apart, which scared all of us. <laughs> I mean, that was quite an eye opener to everybody. And then seeing now this uh, the the one with the 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 plastic and the little dab, the little auto dabber thing that is the little battery powered one that just Still wondering about all the Teflon and the Teflon uh, fevers and things like that that uh, people can get susceptible to to these low quality products that are out and available and they're cheap and that's why they're cheap because they don't have quality products there. So be smart, look and invest what uh, you're getting into and look for quality products where available. Yep, that's it. That is it. Well, we're back up to 500 people after losing everyone on Hash Church there in a minor glitch, a technical difficulty, as we would say. That would be a Hash Church miracle. We raised from the dead. <laughs> Indeed. I just confirmed that Dougie of Hitman Glass can join us next week. We're going to talk about Chalice. Hi. Uh, did you get the chess book he made that was like a, a tribute to his father who was an avid chess player? What, did his father pass away? No, hell no. No, 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 no. It's Father's yeah, Day. No, he still plays with them all the time. Yeah, he still, I see pictures of him and his dad playing. I'm always envious of him. Hey, no, they're great. Uh, so he made this really cool, have you seen the chess pieces book that he made? I don't think so. 
Let me grab it. Oh, it's bomb. It's all kinds of different glass blowers all made from chess sets. Oh, and it's cool. All different chess sets of all different cool varieties. Some you can smoke out of. I would love to have like a full dab set. That would be fun, huh? Well, so from all yeah, the cool things break. Dougie has slipped me, he gave me this chess book one day, and it's really all these incredibly, um, incredibly. Uh, made glass pieces of different chess and uh, it's really a whole story behind it but it goes back to it's dedicated to his dad who was this avid chess player James and um, I just thought it was beautiful man really it was a project that obviously came from the heart and to have commissioned all these different artists to make these absolutely incredible pieces of art who is the somebody's asking who is the author Todd um, let me look. That's a good question. Um, dare I say Dougie almost, because it's written in the first person where he's talking about his dad and uh, dedicates it to his dad and, and, and loving memory of Eric, who also founded uh, Hitman. And I would have to say it's Dougie, because uh, it doesn't say, but it says Hitman Glass. And I mean, the way it's written is first person, and, and first person would be Dougie. I'm definitely saying that it was it was Dougie that came up with it. Dougie is the author. Yeah, I would too. And it's just understated because he put Hitman Glass, and but it's dedicated to his dad and his and his old best friend. So, but it's absolutely you know whoever owns these pieces of of functional glass hash art slash chess, really quite phenomenal. I mean, hard you know. But yeah, Father's Day made me think of Dougie and uh, the upcoming event, Chalice. Nice. Excellent. Welcome Tony in his car, probably on the way to the High Times Cannabis Cup. Going to get it done down there. You guys going down to the cup today at all, Etienne or Todd? Yeah, I don't know if you can see me or hear me, but I'm on my phone. We can hear way. you briefly. We can see you and hear you. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I'm going to try to do this uh, uh, Hash church broadcast from my phone because that's like the only thing that'll get a signal. Well, at least you have on headphones, right? <laughs> yeah, the headphones is helpful, right, Todd? You got to admit. You got to say that is closing the audio gap in that car really nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> No, no, I don't think uh, I'm not going today. I went yesterday. Um, <coughs> Todd and I went yesterday, and <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to be it for me. Well, maybe two days is a little bit much. I remember the old Amsterdam Cups, five days every year, five days. I'll tell you, by the day five, most people were dropping out with the plague. <laughs> <laughs> the Amsterdam Yeah, Cup. I, I ended up my, what, the first one, which I, I got married at, you know, like a fool. Um, like I, a I, I, I did... I, I smoked after because everybody's like, "Here, dude, congratulations! Here's a joint. Which Here's a joint. Ninety-five. So in Amsterdam? Yeah, I got married on stage. Stephen Gaskin did no. the ceremony. I was at your wedding. Yeah, I had a full hemp outfit. Uh, Denny made my hemp suit. Well, that's insane I, that that was you. Yeah, back when I had the handlebar mustache, dude. Dude, the, the the wedding cake had a pound and a half of trichomes in it. It was fucking devastating. It was <laughs> me, Jack, everybody. We were all fucked up because I asked Doug because his mom made the the cake. I was like, how big a slice should I have? He's like, no bigger than this. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I just ate a piece that big. He's like. Good luck. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, it was it was crazy. But what happened was, then everybody's like, dude, congratulations. And the next day, everyone's just giving me joint after joint, and I got the plague. And the last two days there, I was sick as a dog, and it sucks uh, to be sick as a dog in another country <laughs> in a single Dutch bed near a hotel, going, oh. Dude. I left early one year from getting so sick. There, I even have pictures of me like laying on my buddy's floor and just uh, just so destroyed by sickness that I was like, I need to get out of here. It was kind of like Spain last time when I left. You Spain. know what works really good against that is smoke a, little, a few more joints. Right. From other people that just came back from super random countries and have weird wheezes and coughs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
I thought it was really special you got married from Stephen Gaskin. I mean, of all the right the hippies I look up to, Stephen it was and his wife. It and, was and, uh, two of the coolest of the cool, right there. And you were right there. You were my best man. Todd was my best man in my wedding. He had his, he was in the black hemp. I was in the natural hemp. Monica was there, and oh, it was uh, Patty Smith, Smith, guitarist, was who played the the music, which was pretty fucking cool. Because I grew up a punk and I have fucking Patty Smith's guitar, fucking playing my fucking wedding, as well as have you know <laughs> Stephen Gaskin doing the ceremony. It was. Very, very special, and to celebrate with everyone afterwards. Uh, you know, this is with Jack and everyone. It was, um, I wish I had more pictures. It was so surreal. It was such a, so fast, and it was so over, so fast that I wish I had more uh, pictures of that time because it was, it was a, a moment in history. Like I said, you know, it was back, with, back before Jack had his stroke, and he was still very, bombastic and again the next day everybody was so hung over um, friends of mine actually had eaten way too much of the cake and had spent time you know because again there's single beds right in the, the hotels and the couple kept a garbage can in between them and they kept throwing up and they kept you know taking turns and unfortunately my one of my my friend he stayed too long there and his wife hit him right in the back of the head <laughs> with her puke so I don't, yeah, it was just one of those crazy times where you're just wonderful memories to be left with. <laughs> well, I'll have to go through my pictures and see if I have some pictures of your wedding. That's um, funny. Thank you, sir. Todd, you probably have video, don't you? No, you didn't really I have you camera. I do have video because I was carrying around the video camera all the time at that time. Yeah, you, I remember you got us at the wedding. We got the yeah, wedding I rings. Video tape that that's right. I might have videotape as well because I definitely videotaped a bunch at that. In fact, it was three years later meeting Marble Slinger and Jason Lee hitchhiking on the way to see fish at the Gorge uh, in Washington. And uh, we, I realized that I had met this guy before. And I went home and I started going through my tapes and I literally found a conversation that Slinger and I had at the PAX party house in the corner where they had that era cloner set up that year. And I was literally like, you can hear Slinger like, yeah, I just finished uh, uh, um, uh, film school in Ithaca, New York, and blah. It was totally this dude that I, be, you know, ended up being very good friends with. That's why it just tripped me out that that was Ed Chan's wedding. It's like, whoa, that was. Really and I, I just want to give a shout out to my ex-wife uh, Rachel because she is my ex-wife. Thank you. It was a wonderful time and experience. And it's in the movie. If, you, if you've ever seen the movie Weed. The, which was a movie that was done by these guys from the Sundance Film Festival. It was on Netflix way back in the day or Comcast. But I, it was in that movie Weed, and after my divorce, I got to go to a theater, and I got to see my wedding on the big screen. <laughs> <It's> really, <laughs> really surreal, let me tell you. Marcus yeah. and Etchen, I've attended every single one of the High Times Harvest Festivals. Uh, I, well, I think I'm the only there. person, not even any of the High Times people, has attended every single one of them. Right on, you, Sam. You were definitely one of the consistencies there. I would, like, back in the day, like in the mid-90s or whatever, if you wanted to find Sam, you would look on the floor and look for matches and screens, and you could follow them like a little trail. And then eventually you'd hear this sort of loud voice in a corner, and you'd be like, oh, shit. I remember you telling me that. That was one of your comments when I first met. She's like, if you want to find Sam, just follow the match heads and the screens. And you laugh. It was amazing. I don't know, because you weren't really puffing with a lot of people back then. You were puffing mostly with yourself, and it was incredible how many matches and screens there were on all three floors of the PAX Party House yeah. when you were there. I, I, I used a match for each puff. I know, I remember. One fresh match. The match was like all wood with a tiny little bit of burn at the end. I remember some guy running around picking up those fucking screens off the I floor. do too. 100% yeah. I remember that and being like, oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm going for a fresh load myself. Right? You're, you're, under, you're underscoring your abilities. So, Sam, did you have your own screen company at that time? No, I, but I used imported American stainless steel ones, mm. and I got this really, really fine mesh. Yep. And as soon as the stuff stopped bubbling, 
when it wanted to lean more towards combustion is when I would throw it down on the ground. Yeah, you inspired me to buy those actually, and I made them available on Fresh Headies for years. Even still, they're available. Those really tight, tight, tight. Because people were like, "Oh, these are good enough," and I was like, "Listen, these are ridiculous. They'd be like screens like this that the hash would it wouldn't even have to finish melting. It would just begin melting and disappear." And we were looking for more something that was so tight that if you put like two of them together especially that it was yeah. very I, I couldn't find anything smaller than mine that was practical so yeah. I, I, I used that size and I, I bought to, thousands of them I was going to say I used to buy them five and ten thousand at a time Thanks Sam probably got them by the container load yep yep those are them tight these actually aren't them these are actually pretty tight I got these ones in Ottawa but mm -hmm. um I, I did line them up with Sam's, and Sam's are tighter. He's definitely has the tightest screen that I've ever seen. Yeah. Hey, can I ask, uh, Alexander, you know, what brought you around to, you know, realizing cannabis could be beneficial in what you were dealing with with your child? What, sorry, what, uh, what like, brought me to that? What, what kind of brought you to the, the, the realization that this might be something that you should be pursuing independently, you know, in a sense, and seeing if it would work, you know, what, what was it? Well, I mean, um, like I said, I, I, was, I was researching, I began just researching neuroscience because I wanted to understand as best I could what was going on. I mean, I'm not a scientist. I went to film school. I'm, I'm a nerd, so I minored in physics, biology, and, and chemistry, which I got made fun of a lot for in film school, but uh, uh, it was helpful in, in the fact that I could understand the you know the scientific uh, elements and lexicon a little bit easier I guess when I started doing that research and um, and I came across uh, some anecdotal reports uh, it was actually really cool that you know it's, a, it's very unfortunate I wish I didn't have to look into this at all because I wish my daughter was just a typical healthy child obviously but um, what was really cool was that <clears throat> when I started looking into it uh, because of social media and internet connectivity it was relatively easy for me to get in touch with doctors who had a little bit of experience with it already like people in Colorado uh, a doctor in Japan who had been looking at the endocannabinoid system for uh, seizure activity and, and so I started reaching out to people asking questions like trying to figure out like you know no one truly understands why or how it works, admittedly, but um, I started just reaching out to people, and and I, and after you know reading like the Cochrane report and 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 other you know studies that have been done, I said like this has got to be before I you know before I allow the doctors to to stick a tube in her stomach and put her on something called a ketogenic diet, which can be successful as well. Um, at the time, she couldn't crawl. She couldn't. She was two. She couldn't crawl. She couldn't walk. Uh, really, the only joy she had, and her the only quality of life she had, was she really likes like salami and and uh, yogurt and, and uh, you know different types of food. And and I was so I said before we start putting her on a diet that's completely restrictive, um, I, I I need to. I had, I had read these anecdotal reports. I had spoken to some parents in Colorado that were using it successfully, uh, like like the Figgies and stuff like that, who were in the CNN pieces. Um, I had spoken to a couple of adults, uh, one in California, really cool, uh, really cool lady, and um, so I just I said this this has to be looked at further. And the more research I did, the more um, the more evidence I found that that you know cannabis could be uh, an effective seizure uh, seizure controlling agent, so that, that I just kind of flipped a switch and said we have to do this before we start like you know let's add this drug and let's add this drug and then another and another and another. Let's try this first. So I think it's great you have more faith in nature. I mean, and it it definitely dumb bounds me how people will have such blind faith in pharmaceuticals that have a long list of side effects. And here in the United States, at least, 
they don't test drugs for c compatibility. And you hear about people that are on so many different drugs that if it was all pooled into one drug and it was a multi-molecule drug, it would never pass the FDA. And instead, these doctors just stack, stack, stack thoughtlessly, in my opinion, on a lot of, in a lot of instances <clears throat> and compromise the health of their patients way more than they help the health of their patients. And I think it's fantastic that you looked at this you know, natural remedy as a potential solution for what she was dealing with. You know, how do you feel about it continuing? Like, for me, I've used cannabis in a maintenance profile in my life. I have a spinal fusion. My first five vertebrae are fused solid. And right. instead of using opiates, I use cannabinoids. And it's proof I'm pretty healthy, yeah, and, and not, you know, opiate or anything dependent. You know, it takes me a week to eat a chocolate bar. Mm. So, you know, I've, this is something that could work for her long term. Yeah, well, that's the thing is that... Um, like, we don't know what the future holds for her. Uh, like I said, she's four. She's fairly severely delayed still. Um, we don't know how much of that is caused by some unknown underlying condition that, they, you know, we if haven't you, found yet or that it's it's damaged from the constant seizures. Where, where, do you, where is she uh, mentally at currently? In terms of age? Of age, yes. Because I have a brother who's autistic, so he's he's 40... Nine, but he's probably at the mental age of a sixteen-year-old. Right. So, so she's four. Uh, she's basically as physically able as a typical four-year-old. She has a little bit of trouble with uh, certain stairs and things like that. Mentally, I'd say I'd put her about a little under two. Um, so, is she speaking or enunciating? No, she doesn't have actual language. She she does uh, communicate in terms of. Uh, you know, she'll she'll put her arms up and and, and make a sound because she wants a hug. Uh, she's she's a bit crazy, really. She'll she'll usually just take what she wants and <laughs> uh, whatever it is. Uh, you know, speaking of that, could, have you thought about supplementing you know cannabis's other oil, which is hemp seed oil, um, into her diet? If you you have a great book by a Canadian doctor, and it's uh, the title is Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill. And the doctor's name is Dr. Udo Erasmus. And he oh, devoted a whole chapter to hemp seed and hemp seed oil. And he, na he called it nature's most perfectly balanced oil for nutrition. And it points out that a lot of how our brain works is these little pi electron clouds that are basically, you know, basically form BFAs that connect our thoughts. And right. if you start supplementing her diet with nutrition rich hemp seed oil and d -hill hemp seed, it, it could really benefit her in the way her brain heals. And you can just look up, you know, omegas, of, you know, fatty acids and look at the stories and see <clears throat> how it's been beneficial. Yeah, I've, I, I've been looking at that actually. Um, I was actually going to switch her carrier oil to hemp seed oil in terms of dilution. Um, we were using... Uh, olive oil at first, then we switched to avocado oil, and now I've switched to MCT oil. Well, can I tell you a funny? What I was doing in the 90s was I was mechanically seed separating my resin glands, and then I was just taking these organic resin glands, and I was putting them in hemp seed oil, and I was like lightly heating them up until the resin glands would just basically disappear in the oil. Right. And then at that point, I would then, you know, I was making muffins, and I was trying to learn dosing with it because I felt, wouldn't it be just so incredible if she gave us, you know, the solvent and the medicine, like, right there together. It was the hemp seed oil and the resin glands. Nothing else needed. And um, my friend licked the bowl that I was making this lot of once because he poured it into the muffins <laughs> and while I got a phone call. And he proceeded to stay up for a while on Saturday and then slept all the way through Sunday and woke up Monday morning asking me what time it was. And I was asking him what day it was. And he got he got the answer wrong, actually. He was like, it's Sunday. And I was like, no, Sunday happened yesterday, man. And he was like, no, I have stuff to do. I was like, yep, the stuff you had to do came, visited, smoked on your bed while you were sitting there, laying there sleeping, and we couldn't wake him up. And he, but he woke up feeling great. You know, but, sure. but I recommend it to a lot of people because it's a simple solution, and that light heat decarboxylates the, the medicine. And I wasn't in the 90s in the ability to get this stuff tested. 
But, you know, if you're growing your own medicine and, and all it is is a mechanical sieve separator between 60 and 150 microns, and uh, I would just, it would shake on a rototap. Super right. simple. So, Alexander. Yeah. You said you did film, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's it, what right? I was for. So have you thought about doing a documentary on your experience and what you've gone through to show other people, other patients, other parents who are finding out or going to find out in the future and have a similar journey, may not have the exact same journey, but yours is unique. It's a beautiful thing, and you're a documentary person, right? So... Yeah, I've uh, actually I did write one. Um, I haven't. I mean, I've been capturing a lot of footage. I have tons of camera gear and stuff of you know what's happening in our family unit, etc. Uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty dynamic because it's funny actually. Funny story. Um, my son one time said to me two years ago. My son is five. Uh, he'll be six in August. So two years ago, he was three, uh, he was four, and Gwenny was two. And uh, my wife was at the time saying, should we have another kid? So I said, I said to my son, Damien, I said, hey, Damien, what do you think if, if we had another like, brother or sister? And he said, uh, only sister, daddy, only sister. And I thought, well, that's weird. So I started prodding him with questions. And what I came to the realization of, and this is kind of an interesting social experiment, so to speak, um, was that we have very close friends who have uh, two sons the same age as, as our kids, so at the time four and two. And they, you know, they come over every weekend and we have a barbecue, whatever. Um, and their, their younger son, who's the same age as Guinevere, was... Uh, is, is a typical child, and he would always, you know, I want the Superman, and they, I'm going to take the sandwich, and I'm going to steal the toy. So, in his, in, but Gwenny at that time couldn't do anything. She couldn't crawl. She couldn't walk. She couldn't steal your sandwich. She couldn't do anything, really. So, really, you'd put her down, and she'd just sit there. So, in my son Damien's mind, uh, because of his experience with this other little boy, and his experience with Gwen, he thought, girls don't bother you. Sisters are just nice little girls who don't take your stuff. And boys want to take your shit and steal your toy. And, 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 and it was like, it was because he was equating gender to her disabled state. So now he's like, he's learning the opposite. That little girls are bad and they're going to steal everything and, and bother you. Um... So, yeah, I mean, uh, I have put together a treatment for a documentary, and uh, it's just about finding the time to, to get into, you know, actual producing it. Awesome. Well, we'll look forward to seeing that one of these days. Yeah, I'm, authoring, I'm, uh, I'm actually authoring a case report right now as well to submit to journals because uh, I've, I was asked to by, by a couple doctors because they, they really do want to see this information get pushed out in legitimate arenas. <laughs> not that not that this or other media outlets are illegitimate, but obviously, if uh, if physicians and clinicians see something in a in a you know journal, it's 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 more impactful for them. Absolutely. I got a question for you, Alexander, about your testing. Where are you getting your testing done in Toronto? Um, I actually send it out to uh, Vancouver, Vancouver Island, or Vancouver City. Uh, no, it's in where's it in Victoria? MB Labs. Yeah, MB Labs. Okay, cool. Yeah. And you're getting so you're getting. Um, are you you're decarboxylating your your oil and then sending it out? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm, I'm processing it, uh, decarbing it, and then uh, then mixing it, then sending it out for testing. You know, it's like a two or three mil sample, I think. Um, and uh, and then you know then then I get the test back. I test for uh, CBD, THC, CBN, uh, CBC. Uh, they're all also, do, they're doing the acids. Are you getting back any acids, or is it completely dark decarboxylated product? Well, it's it's a variable, right? Because uh, usually it's completely decarboxylated. Uh, there have been a couple times where there was still some uh, acidic cannabinoids uh, left over because I guess I didn't. I may have decarboxylated slightly more for the same time, so it didn't completely decarb. Um, 
and that's that's a whole different arena that I'm looking into uh, tracking uh, using acidic cannabinoids. So I actually want to lower her dose and then add THCA and uh, see see if that can uh, benefit her in any way. Cool. So you just you get your your raw materials from LPs, then I take it. Uh, the raw materials I get from LPs. There is one LP also selling pre-made oil. Yep. Uh, and I've used that a little bit of that as well. Uh, again, it's like which one is that? Is that the uh, hydrocarbonatherin? You want to you want me to say the name? Yeah, I was just curious. Yeah, no, Can Canamed has a has a uh, ready to go one to twenty oil. One so to twenty. Uh, that's a note for people that are looking for it. So. As, as far as I know, that's the only uh, oil of that ratio currently on the market. How are you finding um, price versus production, like ready-to-use product versus making your own? Uh, it's pretty similar, um, other than the fact that obviously you know the hundred fifty dollars or whatever the lab test costs is additional, right? Sure. So when it comes to that, there's you know there's a whole question of like how much am I making where you know if I'm if I'm processing 30 grams and I have to spend $150 on a lab test versus processing 120 grams $150 on a lab test um, and then there's the <clears throat> the 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 different question of um, you know time and uh, all that kind of stuff right yeah, so of I mean course. if look if if uh, <clears throat> if I'd be happy to buy from an LP if uh, if they had the exact ratio that I always needed, and it's easy, and uh, but uh, I think it costs uh, about three hundred bucks a month for her. Hmm. Crazy. So, Which should definitely be covered by insurance companies or or uh, healthcare companies, no? Like, but but will they? Will the insurance companies in Canada cover that? Well, I think with the work that Jonathan Zaid is doing, that that's sort of the that's sort of the idea that if they're going to pay for all these other medications, it makes absolutely zero sense for them not to pay for these ones. Yeah, Jonathan is a super smart kid, and uh, he's doing amazing work. Yeah, he sure does. We've had him on Hash Church a couple of times. Look forward to talking to him again. He's uh, he's managed to get an insurance company to cover his uh, his cannabis. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't happen here in America. We are kind of rather jealous of that opportunity. Yeah, um, and in in Amsterdam, um, the companies. Yeah, that's some uh, starting material right there. See it? Yep. That's uh, that's out of butane. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, not at all. And you so you decarboxylate that uh, just in the oven, or what do you do? You put it in the carrier. Yeah, I put that uh, into the oven and then I uh, mix it in with, uh, like I said, right now I'm using MCT oil, um, and then then off to the left. You've probably got a substantial amount of beta caryophylline left over in that too. It might be interesting if funds allow at some point in time to see how much terps are in the uh, your extract. Yeah, that's something else. Here's a here's a whole bunch of different ones. I'm I just sent out for testing. These are all different. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see. Mhm. Mm yeah. These are all different. Uh, some are some are made with alcohol. Some are made with butane. Need to figure out a way to get you compassionate lab pricing. I don't know if 150 bucks is right to be charging someone trying to make meds for their their kid, but I asked them. Uh, you know, I asked them for for a discount, but uh, because I mean. I've sent, uh, I don't know how many, 20 samples in the past year. Yep. But uh, they just, you know, they, they don't really do that. They, they've been awesome, though. They, they're really cool, and they've been really helpful. Um, and, you know, even with, you know, when I had uh, questions about uh, further explanations of, of stuff, they were, they've always been really good, so... Um. We're looking at maybe setting up a lab out here, so if, if we do get that doing, we'd definitely be happy to help you out with something a little more reasonable than 150 bucks a shot. That would be awesome. Yeah. No promises. <laughs> awesome. It's kind of in the works, but we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still, and I'm still experimenting with, uh, you know, I've actually, I've done some, uh, John, thanks to you, uh, some rosin pressing, and uh, I'm going to get that tested as well. 
and then I'm I'm still experimenting with um, different profiles from uh, press versus butane versus al versus alcohol extraction. It was really cool though when I got the. Uh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say when um when I know with uh, Mark even talked with with Haley and with Cheryl Rose when she was using the oil extractions she went over to using bubble hash. And then she was washing the bags, and she would take the like the 160 all the way down to the 73, and she was capping that and decarbing that, and she and that's where she got her longest with no Caesar free. Um, and she I think she went over like three or four months, and that was by using bubble hash caps that were decarbed and staying away from the petrochemicals and stuff like that. So it was right. she talked to Cheryl about that. I know it by some of you being in contact with her, but yeah, um, I know Cheryl. Yeah, so she, I know that really that really worked well, and I think she was also taking the natural GABA. Behind that is a few ways that I've used in the past to help Cheryl right. and Haley out. Because right, right. If if you're using a clean source of butane though, and you, then you're decarbing it in the oven at whatever, you know, probably 150 C or 180 C. I guess if you're doing CBD, you're probably maybe you know it's 200. What temperature did you? Uh, yeah, it was about uh, yeah about a buck uh, 192, I think maybe. Yeah, you got to be higher for THC. Um. I wanted to steer the conversation back to what um, Etienne was saying about the insurance companies. In Holland, they did a study, and actually the insurance company that started covering cannabis realized that they were spending less money on the patients that were using cannabis versus the ones that were using the expensive pharmaceuticals. So yeah, you know, for, the, way, the way insurance companies are run are run by actuaries who just right. base everything based on numbers. They don't really give a shit what you're paying for. They just want to save the, the most amount of money, right? Right, of course. I mean, that's actually something I was just discussing with uh, a friend of mine, just uh, randomly. Uh, I, I, I mean, I'm using probably for myself. I'm, I probably only use maybe a couple grams a day for pain control. Not even, probably one gram a day. Um, so call that what, ten bucks, right? Uh, Fifteen bucks at high prices. Um, so when you do a cost, a cost benefit analysis. I was on a on a, a synthetic opiate called tramadol, which yep. didn't didn't work at all. But um, that was prescribed to me two years ago at I think three times a day, and I think they cost twenty five dollars a pill. So yeah. so you know now you're looking at like a sixty dollars a day cost savings. Yeah. So I mean it's a very valid argument to say if you know if cannabis can can control an, a symptom for. 80% less money, uh, why aren't we using that? But uh, the pharma <laughs> companies don't like that argument, obviously. Yeah. You, know, you also make the argument why I really don't support I mean, here where we're dealing with legalization and we're hearing about all these people that are feeling entitlement to prohibitionary profits to continuing because they want to maintain small family farms. All I hear is they want to keep the price up. And when I hear people like you talking, it kind of devastates me to think that there are groups of people now that just want to see cannabis retain that pricey, lofty status so they can continue to make money off of all of our health. I, I sincerely think this whole planet would be healthier if cannabis was pennies on the pound. Yeah, well, and, and this is a perfect case for why it should be. You know, People should be allowed to grow as many CBD plants as they want. Or, or THC plants. I mean, I, I mean, if if you need, for, you know, if you're relying on, you know, what a gram of cannabis oil a day, for example, in major pain, and you need, you, so to create, to process that, you need to start with what four or five grams, right? A gram um, a day. Yeah. I wish. You, you need to be able to go to a cannabis pick your own cannabis Christmas tree farm and buy any plant that's growing there that's two, three, five meters tall, flowered, it's ready to go, and you pay a hundred bucks. I, I love that. That's what he used to always say. Go in and pick your own plant as it's like ready to harvest. That's the ideal way. You dry it, you manicure it, you do the extractions, but the plants, if, if you, you could put in a thousand an acre. If Ten acres, that's a million dollars, Bruto. Yeah. Alexander, are you using CBD for your, is it rheumatoid arthritis that you have? I have psoriatic arthritis, so it's okay. similar to rheumatoid, uh, but not exactly the same. Are you, I, are you trying CBD or THC creams or anything like that? Yeah, I've used topicals, uh, uh, THC topicals. I've used uh, CBD oil and THC oil. I vape a little bit here and there. Um, 
you the the main benefit for me personally and like really I don't my kids health is far more important to me than mine but and, which is kind of silly because I got to stick around to take care of them right but um, the main uh, the main benefit I get from uh, from cannabis oil personally is that I I take a little bit every night and uh, and it helps me sleep so whereas you know if I'm not t if I don't take it I'll wake up every 40 minutes to adjust because my leg hurts or I have fused vertebrae as well my back hurts um, when I take it you know I'll, I'll go to sleep and I'm good for like four or five hours so it's, it's you know what I find funny is now that we realize we all have endocannabinoid systems I think that even the the prohibitionist cops that why are you a doper have to realize that they themselves need these chemicals to balance themselves just like we're finding in an honest way that they're helping us with a variety of problems that Western medicine is having a hard time dealing with, that even prohibitionists need these cannabinoids in their system too. Yeah, prohibitionists I mean, need cannabinoids too. That's a good line for the show this week. <laughs> that is a good line. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, I mean, uh, I think uh, I think there's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of work to do in terms of education in, in both you know the physician community as well as uh, as well as the public community. It's 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 been actually a little bit surprising to me uh, since I kind of went public with with the treatment for Guinevere. Um, you know, I've had you know elderly people come up to me and say, "Oh, that's great! I'm so happy she's doing well." You know, I use cannabis for my headaches, and like. These are people that would have never admitted it in a million years if they hadn't seen me talking about it in public media openly. So, the, um, you know, there's there's a lot of education that needs to be done to to public patients, physicians, every like the whole the whole world basically. All right, guys, just going off to someone in chat who's bashing one of the panelists. I, he's like, you're always sticking up from, like, yeah, no shit, of course I'm going to stick up for someone that I look up to as a mentor. Of course I'm going to stick up for someone who is in my chat room on my uh, panel right now, and it's amazing that you have to explain this to people sometimes, but uh, regardless of that, let's move forward with the conversation at bay. This is good conversation. It's nice to see Past Church Father's Day episode with many fathers in the room right now. And as Darren would say, bong he would say, rip. He would say, bong rip, mother lover. Bong, bong rip. Mother <laughs> lovers. Yeah, Alexander, it sounds like you might not get a, uh, a happy Father's Day from Guinevere this year, but, man, you definitely deserve it. She's, uh, she's lucky to have you in her life, so really good for you. Well, it, it is going to be a happy day. She's, she's taking a nap right now. My... Uh, my son's at its swimming lessons, and I'm talking to all you fine gents, and then uh, she's going to wake up, and I'm going to take her swimming. Nice. Right on. Well, that sounds like a happy Father's Day, and as I stated from the beginning, you're a hero, and you may not think so, but you went above and beyond, and you took the risk, and you're also now um, a leader to others, who are other parents who are in a similar situation, who are wondering right now if they have to take that dive or wondering if it's worth the risk and you're a testament to that it's a success now as many successes as, as there are there's that much many that I know that are not success stories so mm. uh, we always hope for those that are still out there searching for the answer that they're able to find it at some point and um, thank you again Alexander because uh, if it wasn't for brave men like you taking that risk you know who knows where your daughter would be currently? Yeah, you're here. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my my uh, my hope for the future is that uh, you know she continues to improve, which seems to be the case, and that um, you know hopefully you know by by sharing the the information that I've acquired during this journey and uh, with both you know public and and uh, the physician community. I hope that uh, in the future, um, if someone is in this similar situation, they can, instead of spending a thousand hours reading uh, and, and researching for themselves, they can go to their doctor, their, their doctor can say, 
oh, how about try this, right? I mean, I spoke to uh, I spoke to a parent the other day who has a, I think, 22 or 23 year old daughter, who uh, started cannabis also about 18 months ago, and she's doing much better. But you know, they're 20 years ahead. So you know, if if I if this was 20 years ago. Without uh, the vast resources available online, I probably wouldn't have figured anything out, and uh, you know, she probably would still be doing very poorly. So, are you finding any of those physicians that you s have seen or are seeing? Are they recommending cannabis now? Have they changed their mindsets? A, cu a couple have written uh, a bunch of prescriptions since uh, since they've seen you know Guinevere's progress, and. Uh, and one in particular has has started spearheading a, a, a proper national clinical trial. So, uh, I mean, uh, you know, that's obviously going to take time. Uh, it's not going to happen in a week, but uh, it's it's progress, and and they're becoming very accepting. Um, they've actually recently, just finally, uh, put cannabis on her chart at the hospital. So. <laughs> It was never on there, and they and every time I brought it up, they were like, "No, no, 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 we were not." Okay, great. Uh, now it's on the chart as one of her medications, and uh, that's, that's a huge step. That's yeah. a huge step. Yeah, it's cool. Don't realize. I mean, how many times did you go before you were denied that? Well, like I said, like uh, until maybe six, seven, eight months ago, every time I brought it up, it was like they wanted to run away from the room. Uh, now it's on her chart. Uh, they, she, even when she uh, she went in for a 20-hour EEG a couple weeks ago, and um, they had no problem. Like, okay, well, they want to they want to see what medicine she's getting every you know six hours or whatever it is. They're writing down, okay, she took her cannabis oil. Uh, <laughs> it was it was really uh, kind of uh, validating, you know. Had to be very enriching. Had to be very fulfilling. Because it's 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 an amazing thing to prove somebody right, you prove yourself right against those odds, and especially against those people of science who are looking at you skeptically. Yeah, well, it's it's great because like uh, they're they've they've really, you know, I, I won't go as far as to say come full circle, but uh, like I spoke on a I spoke on a panel at the University of Toronto back in in uh, October. Alongside uh, a neurologist and a neuroscientist, and they're both, and one of them is is my daughter's doctor. And uh, you know, although you know the the their hands are tied at the the hospital from writing scripts because they haven't done the study yet. Um, they're very encouraged. They want to do the study. Uh, they've seen other kids doing well, uh, and and the biggest problem is that. You know, some kids are not doing well. <clears throat> For example, uh, the 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 way I've worked out Guinevere's dosing is, you know, very stringent. Um, and I had a call from from a parent a while ago, who said, you know, we finally got a doctor to prescribe us CBD for seizures. Uh, we got some. We we've processed it. We've sent it to the lab for testing, et cetera, et cetera. And she, she did really well for two days. And then became extraordinarily lethargic. Well, the doctor just blindly wrote three grams a day, right? And and they don't understand what three, like how many milligrams of active components are in three grams. Okay, well if it's fifteen percent, that's four hundred fifty milligrams in three grams, right? It's pretty simple math, but because they're not being explained it that way, and and the parents maybe or the patients don't really understand it, uh, the doctor wrote three grams uh, and and. They were giving her three grams, and she did really well, and then became very lethargic. So I did a quick calculation, and based on what I've seen work for Guinevere, they were giving her like 800 percent higher dosage than needed. So she, yeah, she's she's getting like you know now she, she's getting 15 grams of THC a day, maybe right. or whatever it is. It's it's you know there's a therapeutic range to all medicine, and um, if you're a thousand percent over that therapeutic range, it's probably not going to work properly. So 
the, you know, these are the kind of terminologies that the doctors have to become ingrained with and, and understanding. Was that, and, and that's actually really funny because that's that was a real eureka moment for 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 my doctors is when I brought them the lab results and I said, okay, so she's getting 68.5 milligrams a day. They said, oh, okay, that makes sense because. That's when they prescribe Tylenol. They say take X amount of milligrams. They they don't say like take some of this. So I think that you know the, the, all the work that like for example Jonathan Page and, uh, and other scientists are doing to to bring the, the the genotypes together and and then and then you know getting to doctors to understand that you know one gram of forty percent. THC cannabis is not the same as one gram of 10% THC cannabis because there's milligrams of active components. That's what they're not connecting with, right? So um, they, they feel uh, troubled by blindly saying, okay, two grams. What's two grams? I don't understand. Well, it's two grams, right? Yeah, that's for sure. So, but they're, they're coming around and... Uh, I mean, they're like uh, someone else was saying earlier. Doctors aren't evil; they're here to help people. Um, they're they're not uh, they're not trying to hurt us or trying to prevent us. They they need data, right? So, yeah, uh, there's got to be some kind of way to figure out for doctors to understand that there is a huge variability in cannabis. That but playing around with the different ratios, like none of it's toxic. There's not any amount that is gonna, you know, you're gonna right. take a small amount and wig you out. And again, when you're making these extracts and oils, anyway, you know you you're essentially normalizing everything when you when you do the extract. Right, you're homogenizing it, right? So yeah. you know it's consistent, right? So yeah. I mean, but and that's what that's what I found. Like when I started coming back to the doctors with lab results, they were like, "Oh, okay, like I can yeah. get this now." Like yeah, it's essentially yeah. something that they can actually bite their teeth into, as opposed to this unknown that scares them. Right. right, exactly, exactly. So they're they're much more receptive when they when you can talk to them in a lexicon that that they understand, right? Yeah. You know the the, the way that this whole thing's set up right now, that there is a system, but you always have to kind of shake the system to make it work for you. Yeah. So don't people don't just sit back and let the doctors or lawyers or whoever it is that you're dealing with in in society tell you the way it is. Like you can shake the system and make it work for you. You know, there's rules, but there's always exceptions to the rules. So. And you can bend the rules. Yeah, you can bend the rules. You can break the rules, and some rules don't ever apply, you know? Exactly. Uh, just do what you need to do to stay healthy and keep your family and loved ones safe. Should we call it practicing health? Practicing health. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, We're I mean, just trying to stay healthy, you know? We all, we all practice our art, you know? Like, you know, Bubble Man is practicing and is a better hash maker today than he was 10 years ago. You know, I think that's probably the same true for all of us. You're coming up with all these new photography techniques that didn't exist five years ago, and everybody learns. Doctors learn, and unfortunately, they got left by the wayside by a system with you know that didn't recognize cannabis. But I think as we move forward into the future, like it's people are going to start learning more, and that that will start to change. But you know, we're just now getting to a point where it's actually socially acceptable to even really talk about cannabis, which is kind of fucked up. But at least we're here, not where we were 10 years ago. I think that's why it's so important to mention the recreational aspect of it as often as we can now because it's, uh, it's, it's sort of time now. It's like the door is open, they're hearing our voice, they're accepting much of what we've been saying for many years from uh, the industrial applications of hemp and how it can benefit our countries to grow and, and pr pr produce um, uh, different products and food, food products, etc. It just makes good sense that the, uh, the that they can't argue against the common sense that is Alexander's story, and not only can they not argue against it, but they they pretty much have to they they have to listen to it and learn from it and apply it, so we can see a little bit of a change in the way that uh, well, first of all, that even the way that he had to go about doing it, you know, having to fight your doctor for a medicine that could potentially be life-saving for your child is a pretty heavy position to be put through, and you got to think most people that would enrage. Yeah, well, they should be guiding you through the health, but unfortunately, they haven't been shown all the information. So I'm saying, 
what do you do? You just got to, you know, know what works for you. And I think as, you know, these stories get out there and more people, it's great that you're in touch with Cheryl. And uh, I guess you're on Facebook, so I guess all those social media things help other people that you'll probably be a, a source of information from other people that follow you. So, you know, all, the, all these parents that are fighting for their kids, they're really building a legacy, which is, uh, you know, really awesome. And I, I, I'm, a, I'm really impressed that you, you and Cheryl are both making medicines and having it tested and knowing what's, knowing what you've got rather than just taking somebody else's word for it. And you're carrying your torch and you're carrying it high and you're showing others this is what can be done and this is how it is done. And you're leading by example and mad, mad respect. Yep. Mad respect for sure. Mm -hmm. Cool. I got to say, Etienne, your wardrobe consultant is uh, certainly getting, <laughs> getting your, your money worth on the pay. You've always got the greatest shirts. Where do you shop for your marijuana clothing? <laughs> <laughs> Etsy. Uh, yeah, I look around. I search around. I try to find unique, fun shit just to make every week a little different. But, uh, yeah, this one's from Etsy. I try to keep it eclectic a little bit. <clears throat> I've got no sponsor, no wardrobe. I get high and look for shit, and then I'm like, ah, fuck it. Let's see what they'll react to in this one. Yeah, and people, people seem to like this one a lot. This one got a lot of uh, responses. That's awesome. Uh, someone's got to do a fresh, um, non-crushed bud. You know, like one that's still like where the trikes are all like very much intact and freshly, freshly growing, because uh, that would be ridiculous. That's what this is. Look. Oh yeah, look at that. I didn't even notice. On the top part, it really looks like a crushed bud. Yeah, it's 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 the top of the bud, but yeah, it's it's actually yeah, oh, all the way yeah, down. Dude. <laughs> oh shit. <coughs> it's crazy what they can do with technology nowadays. It really is. There is. Cuban's like, hey, Bubble Man, you should make a shirt like Etienne's of 99% dry sift macro. Word, word. I mean, that's if you look, there's um there's actually a um, let's see. I see the It's hat. called a Air Scanner. There's a couple of few that you can actually just take a picture and send it in, and they'll actually make you put it on a shirt. So you could actually do that. Those exist currently. All right, we'll have them for next week. There you go. And actually, thank you for the shirts. I was gifted, uh, Tony uh, gifted me some Bubble Man shirts and a 120, and I uh, already had the 90, but uh, I'll be wearing 120 for sure, and happily, as well as the Bubble Man. So you'll be seeing those in the future weeks. Nice. Well, rock it on, rock it on. Well deserved. You got the shirt collection, that is for sure. I pass them on. I gift them to people. I, don't, I, can't, I could not keep my closet full of these. I'm wearing my simple... But effective, job provide. Respect. I quote it all the time. It was uh, a Richie Spice tour shirt that was gifted to me by my friend Claude. Thank you, Claude. Today I'm rocking the Mendo wear. Oh, yeah. I got to grow your own wear. Yeah, like yeah. Mendo's it. trying to, um, they're working on um, trying to have a similar branding like Napa. Uh, wine is has done, you know, because you know uh, they've made a whole tourist uh, reality. I think it's billions of dollars a year <clears> to uh, Napa Valley. So Mendo is going to be trying to uh, shape itself along those lines to uh, attract people to uh, their locally grown, and they're going to allow for such as it has. If it's marked Mendocino, it has to actually be grown in Mendocino. It can't be like grown in Humboldt or Trinity and marked as Mendocino. So they're working on actual seals to, I guess, follow what the, the you know, like Champagne. Champagne can only be from the Champagne region. So it seems to be uh, these are the... Um, posturing things that people are going to besides mm -hmm. uh, trademarking names out the yin-yang. Here's an interesting question from the panel, uh, from the chat room. Rob Heels asks, B-man and panelists and chat, do you guys think there will ever be a time you move away from smoking and vaping and to edibles and sublinguals as we get very old? I like how we added the very old because we're already kind of old. <laughs> <coughs> A little bit kind of old. So I don't know. Um, uh, I, I, I definitely, we're not kind of old. We're middle-aged. I consume oral, uh, you know, like c coconut oil extracts 
uh, all the time, like daily. Um, I would be down with uh, some some other edibles and sublinguals. I don't consume them every day, but I can't imagine not vaping or puffing. I really do enjoy the vaping and the puffing myself. Yeah, I can't do edibles myself. I I do hemp seed oil, which is an an actual capsule daily, but uh, edibles are too much of a commitment for me. Uh, I wonder, because it's getting a lot easier with vaporization. I mean, with the nails and dabbing, I mean, we're getting as pure as we can get in such a, a limited amount. So mm -hmm. I, I, I wonder, you know, what, what's it going to get what, more concentrated? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I don't think I'll be moved to edibles myself. I mean, I don't know. We know a couple of folks in the industry. Todd knows this individual also quite well and some of the older folks actually have some lung problems and they don't smoke anymore so it's it's it, it happens but you know take care of your lungs while you're young definitely don't be going around and you know if you're smoking cigarettes you should probably be giving that up that's for sure oh yeah. that's what yeah. causes the who we yeah, go easy on the blunts too Go easy yeah, on blunts them. are horrible. Yeah, it's tobacco's the, it's the, horrible. Well, not only that, the tobacco in these blunts. I mean, they're rolling swishers and fillies, and it's not quality tobacco. It's not like you're getting a frontal leaf. Back in the day, my ex, my ex wife used to get the actual full frontal leaf from American Spirit, and would actually cut the front. Uh, you'd have to soak it because it was so thick, and then she'd roll her blunts in that, and that will put your dick in the dirt, man. Let me tell you, that was some strong tobacco. <laughs> Back to dicks. <laughs> I was back. It's to Father's dicks. Day. I guess you're right. I guess yeah. you're right. <laughs> our, our our children do come out of our penises in a way. Absolutely. You know what? There's no there's no denying. Everything's connected. Even on Hash Church here, everything seems to connect. Well, you know the old joke, right? I have such a great memory. I remember coming in with my dad and leaving with my mom. <laughs> I don't remember that, but I did like to look at Todd's expression when you said it. I always like to see if Todd approves or not, and how he approves. <laughs> hey, we're all the, we're all part of the Lucky Sperm Club, right? We're all the winning sperm here. We're, well, we're, that's what I said earlier. You know, thanks, Daddy. Thanks, yeah. Daddy, for the spark. And I saw that on Facebook the other day. My friend Jeffrey I. Bueller he posted a picture of his father, who's been passed away for a long time now. But uh, he thanked his dad for the spark, and I thought, uh, I would. that's very cool. Yes, thanks, Dad, for the spark. On Father's Day, your Father's Day episode, man, it's just like years are going by, and every Sunday we're still meeting up to chat about whatever seems to come up. It's a pretty cool little concept. I do definitely uh, thank you, Alexander, for, for just coming on the show and sharing your story. It's always nice to get some new people coming on and sharing their story to create inspiration because I know that people are watching and they're they're not it doesn't end here they go on and talk about these things with their family members and their friends and the people that they work with and when you connect that in that way you inevitably are going to come across someone that it's of true value to oh my goodness I have a friend who, who, who their son just was diagnosed with a form of Epilepsy. Maybe I should turn them on to this information, and uh, it's exactly why we do Hash Church for as long as we've done it to uh, get some good information out there to some young kids to be like, I'm going to go and learn this particular degree in school because I was inspired by what they were talking about on Hash Church, or that people can learn your story and and shorten the amount of hours, like you said, the thousand hours down to a, a much more condensed version before they could find help for their child or loved one it's just uh, that's how it all works right there for sure for sure <clears throat> hopefully I'll come on again sometime but I'll be better dressed I'm sorry about my uh, non cannabis shirt dude I think, I think your shirts great man I love the background it looks like it's a beautiful day there you're in the corner of the deck and uh, your sound was perfect so really dude Pat yourself yeah, you, you, you came in rocking it with the headphones on and it all working out the gate. I mean, that's got to be some sort of record. Totally. <laughs> if you were a little bit more clever, you would have told everybody it was a pure hemp shirt. There, <laughs> that's, uh, well, I'm not that clever, so it's okay. <laughs> or maybe it's just that he's honest. <laughs> Seems to be an honest father to me. I, uh, I'm relatively a very honest person, yeah. I can't uh, can't say I do a lot of lying. 
Yeah, you Canadians are not known for being deceptive. <laughs> it's our rude. Aren't we known for being rude? Isn't that what it is? Yeah, I'm yeah, we're that. very rude. Your geese are very rude. Canadians, yeah, well, don't fuck with Canadian geese, man. I no. just got to jump off for a minute. I got to get my uh, power cord here. No problem. We'll see you soon, Alexander. Yeah, I was watching some kids mess with some Canadian geese the other day, and I said to my wife, I said, this could get interesting, because they also had babies. And uh, the kids were kind of just getting real close. And the one kid was kind of threatening to throw a thing that he found on the beach. It was kind of like a piece of a, like a kelp ball that floats on the top where the kelp hangs down. And uh, I thought, man, if he unleashes that, he's going to get attacked by that goose. Luckily, he did not. He didn't even have to be told by his mom. He just didn't throw it. And they ended up floating off. But they were right on the shore. And I'll tell you, I've seen Canadian geese attack people. Not good. I've seen it too. They're vicious. They have a, a mean streak to them. No need to mess with those guys. Big birds alone. I mean, and y'all are such a polite people, you'd think you would raise your geese better than that. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things, our geese spend a lot of time down in America. Yeah, That's I guess... That's true, it, isn't it? That <laughs> what it is? They fly down there watching bad TV and just getting rude. That's that's why they keep coming back and saying y'all all the time. They got to shit somewhere. Yeah, they got to shit somewhere. Boy, they, did they shit. <laughs> oh, that's what we mean. They got to shit somewhere. In Oakland, we've got the uh, the lake here in the, in the center, and uh, they definitely migrate there en masse along with other fowl. And, um, yeah, you have to um, – walking there is quite a uh, task, a challenge. Right. Yeah. That's why they call them foul. Yeah, exactly. That's why they call them foul. See Sam always dropping knowledge bombs here on Hash Church. <laughs> That's awesome. Why what do you what Church? are you puffing on there, Mr. Sam? Some uh, some rosin from a friend of mine from California. Sam is turpless in Amsterdam. It's a it's a disaster. Yes, I am turpless. I have officially. Are you just run just out saying just just some rosin? You don't know what it is? Are you kidding me? No, it's a mixture, so there is no no name. Okay. He's got the beat going in there. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> I could uh, make it so we can't have this on YouTube if it's a popular song. So I'm going to be driving by, going to the Great Canadian Glass Gathering. I'm going to head up there today to stop by. I should stop by for a turp dip. Yeah, stop by for a turp dip if you're driving by, Johnny B. That's... I, I am definitely driving by probably in a few hours. Isn't it to, for another? Isn't it for another week? Yeah, but I've never been there, so I want to go up and take a look around so get an idea because I'm bringing the Argo up and I kind of want to look at what I'm doing. So why not just go up? Take a look. Totally. Crash in the back. Come back. I, it's just a smart thing for me to I, do. I agree. I think that is a smart thing to do. I, I know it really well up there. Yeah, you should go up to Birkenhead Lake. That's where I'm going. I got the Argo. And that's what's, I got, I'm going to go up for a little extra long. I got the outboard on there and everything. And it's like... Anderson Lake's pretty cool, too. And there's, the, uh, there's a road there that, like, uh, it goes over the mountains. It's an insane road. I don't yeah, know what... the Duffy Lake Road. Well, it's not the Duffy, no. It's uh, it's the one right out of Anderson. Oh, sorry, yeah, it goes out of Anderson over to the back. Yeah, it's like, uh, I, can't I always forget the name of it, but it is a gnarly road. Yeah, I had some friends that used to live up there and grow up there on yep. the, on that road. It was pretty, you could you can't get up there unless you have a Subaru or a, you know, something yeah, four-wheel it's drive. Long, it's long enough that if you get, like, halfway through and then there's some other monster truck coming the other way, it's like you're basically backing up. Yeah, which is a crazy thing because that road is nuts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I gotta. Uh, I might have to try and check that out. I, I couldn't make any promises because usually I'm not able to make the Great Glass Gathering. But uh, if I am, I'm definitely gonna drive up there for uh, for just one day or something. Well, this is the first time I've been trying to go, but like I guess it first started when I first got hurt and fell, so I've never been and. Uh, now I just have to go. It's like Red Redbeard's been doing it for like five plus years, hasn't he? Eight years. Eight yeah, it's been a long years. time. Holy eight, 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 eight years. Uh, 
I mean, this is the ninth one, sorry. This is the ninth annual, so. That's the Great Glass Gathering, if you guys want to Google it up and check it out. It's a fun little event that uh, Mr. Redbeard is putting on, Mr. Patrick. Oh, yeah. It'll it's be, be really, you know, really good glass. It's like 40 glass blowers or something that show up, and he's just got a big farm there, and he's got all sorts of good fun stuff happening. It's very... Uh, I like his very simple rules, too. He's, he's got great rules, like, uh, if you've never taken psychedelics, don't take them for the first time at my event. <laughs> yeah. uh, like, <laughs> all of his rules are really, like, wise and smart. He's like, you know, we don't need you. He, he, one of them was, uh, if your dog's an asshole, don't bring him. You know? <laughs> Unless... Unless you're That's going awesome. to watch your dog every minute that he's there. If he's an asshole, do not bring him. I was reading through his rules, and I was like, man, this shit is so Patrick. It's just so hilarious because it's just really honest and true. And uh, he's looking for everyone to have a good time. He's asking people don't <clears throat> do to crazy shit because there is going to be glass and hot and sharp, pointy things everywhere. You know, don't get too balled out and, and, and tripped out. I thought that was great. And respect respect the locals. It's a tiny little town. It's a tiny little zone. Absolutely. So, respect the locals for sure. Yeah. It's just funny to see him saying that on from the from the guy who did his own birthday show so high on mushrooms. Uh, he had to end it after three minutes. He was just like he was just flying on mushrooms on his birthday. He's like, I don't think I can do this show anymore. Uh, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> it's pretty great. That's fun. That's a funny guy. He's an old friend. Absolutely, good, good people right there for certain. Yeah, great vibe. Very good people. So yeah, stop on over on the way up there, buddy. Well, I'm pretty much loaded and ready to go because we got a break in this weather. I thought it was going to rain today, but it looks like it's a time to get up there and take a look. So. Right on. Enjoy the drive, Johnny. It's a good one. Yeah, it's fun. Turn up the music. Got a little bit of reggae going. Oh, and uh, got my pen charging and got a little case to go up with. I got some sift and jar of weed and a little bit of bubble. Yeah, I'm good to go. Fuck me. Well, we'll see you up here in a bit. So what do you have planned for your Father's Day, Mr. Bubble Man, Dad? I have only the plan of making sure I'm hanging out with my family. So I may walk out that door and be like, oh, shit, Johnny B., I'm not even going to be home. My parent, my family's taking me on a helicopter to land on the glaciers for Father's Day and have a picnic. I have no idea. It's probably not going to be quite that awesome. But uh, it could I be. just think, wow, it definitely I should stop by and go for a ride. It could be. We were joking about getting a place up in Pemberton, selling our place here and Houses have just exploded in this neighborhood, and people are just selling their house now so they can make millions of dollars. And I was like, maybe I'd just go buy a house up in Pemberton and get a helicopter with the extra money that we make. But I think I'll just stick and stay in my house and imagine that its value is just the same as it was when I bought it rather than all these other people getting hypnotized. It's very easy to get hypnotized by money, and I warn people not so often. You know, don't don't uh, don't get hypnotized by money. It's okay to to use money as your to to get it to do things for you type of thing. But uh, uh, they have a saying: it makes a, a wonderful servant, but a horrible master. And that is the truth. Don't get too obsessed and hypnotized by it, or it will get you. It will get you. That's for sure. I always thought it was a good tool and not a good goal. Yeah, definitely a good tool and not a good goal. If it's, you know, what is Bob, how does Bob Marley say it? If it's numbers that you're looking, if you're looking for, numbers never end. If it's numbers you're chasing, numbers never end. Like, yeah, that's... Yeah. You seem to chase the resin. I'll chase the resin. I'll chase the resin. Because Around always, my bowl until it disappears. <laughs> Hey, Mark, oh, no, no. Uh, just because there's yeah. a quiet moment here, why don't we talk about the DEA wanting to reschedule? I mean, it's a lot of a lot of chat on the chat room about it. And yeah, I heard that too. People yeah. Well, it's an, we're, we're questioning that report, at least uh, Tom yeah. Angel, who's the reporter, so it's only come from one source, right. that which was seems the, to be the Santa Monica, Monica Observer. That's, that's it, why I kind of didn't really put as much 
Yeah, but it's it's apparently it's making wildfire around the the internets. <laughs> but uh, supposedly there's a preemption via a uh, an interview with a lawyer that the DEA is going to move things to schedule two. And as we know, this is not how the DEA releases information. If it were the case, it doesn't slow leak out. It's uh, it's dropped on a <clears throat> late on a Friday if it's negative news against it, them. It was backed up with the National Enquirer report. Oh, this is, yeah. this is what's which it happening. seems to be. Can so I that's point something out though. In October of '97, the National Enquirer had dedicated an entire page to my case. They didn't drop one name. They didn't get one thing factually incorrect, and they did a more honest job of reporting it than like many of the mainstream newspapers that were trying to drop names and write it as sensationalistically possible. And I was so blown away with how conservative the Inquirer really was in the reporting. I started to think that everything else in that rag was true, too. Of course, a lot of people would back up National, uh, uh, National Inquirer. That's hey, go point. look it up. Well, hey, go hey, go this, look it up this, October of 97. No, 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 find no. the article and tell me one thing they did that was factually incorrect or one name they embellished. And I, I, will, I will stand and say, go, oh, go, oh, I'm corrected, hey, but... A, a clock is a, a, a broken clock is a you know, right twice a day. So, you know, the, the reality is, is we still need to... Um, there was one serious... Donor we, just need more, like, we need more no resources. That's all nope. I'm saying to, to you know this You know what Sinead O'Connor said, though? I mean, know the real enemy, right? Well, if you believe the National Enquirer, Todd, then how many aliens are living on Earth right now? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, uh, technically that's... And where is problem. Bat Boy? Poor Bat Boy. And don't forget about the shape-shifting reptilians. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Imagine if it's all right. Jesus Christ. Someone should call Steve Hager and tell him to write about this stuff. Wait, you know about that because you're in the Illuminati, <laughs> right, Bubble yeah. Man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, careful with that. Someone told me I was in the Illuminati, but I don't know... Don't the you, look, you look like a reptilian, actually. <laughs> Did you just tell, you're not an Illuminati, but you are illuminated. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Only because of my lamp. <laughs> it's the screen. It's the computer screen. He is illuminated. How hey, did go, he do that? Going back to stupid movies, the jerk and this lamp. Classic. <laughs> 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 oh my God, Steve Martin. We we should make an official okay. cap. For Ash Church, with a little tiny LED light that face, faces down under your cap, sh shining on your forehead, and uh, and across the, the 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 forehead of the cap, we could say illuminated. Perfect. I wear one in the dark, dark, dark. Can I get mine in tin foil? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that, that's only for the Pope. Etienne, tinfoil's not safe. It's better if we make it out of titanium. <laughs> yes, sometimes we lose track, Alexander, and we just go off on all sorts of tangents. It's the wonders and the joys of cannabis, really. Yeah, hey, I'm, uh, I'm all about tangents, man. I'm uh, a slightly insane person by most people's standards. So. Oh, wonderful. Well, that's why you fit in so well here. <laughs> Well, it's uh, it's it's glad to, I'm happy to be here and uh, yeah, it's uh, well, we're sorry the circumstances that brought us here, but we're happy to have you. Well, Absolutely. thank you very much. It's it's uh, I've been told you know when I was, I think when I was uh, about seven, I had severe ADHD. Still do, um, and my aunt bought me a poster that said. You walk to the beat of a different drummer, because I was always considered kind of freakishly weird. So uh, I guess um, I've never been normal. <laughs> normal is only a setting on your washer and dryer. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> normal dry. Mine doesn't even say normal. It's like politically correct. It says like general, general normal. <laughs> A? A, yeah, I got the Canadian version. 
Someone said Yours they don't. Just has timed dry dryer. <laughs> dryer, eh? Eh. Mine says danger. And then there's cycle boot. Cycle boot. That's the wrong dryer then there, John, if it says danger. <laughs> so my my, my boss right now is starting to shake and make all kinds of noise, so it's in the danger mode right now. I was like, shit, you know what? This just started happening, so I got a danger mode right now on my washer. I'm going to go get it fixed or buy a new one. My it's washer. 20 years old, so I'm figuring, you know what? Time for a new washer. John, you're not supposed to put 20 kilos in at a time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I was pushing on it this time, and it's just like I figured that was what was going on. But what do you recommend? Nineteen pounds in a twenty? Is that what you're saying? I got yeah, the stainless the steel drum. So. Right. You want to make that weight even? That's for sure. You'll get this uneven weight distribution, which will make for an uneven thrashing, which will make for an uneven extraction, and the process won't be as efficient. There you go. <laughs> My uh, my washer was in real danger mode about six months ago. The the mice got in, and they chewed the goddamn hose, and it flooded my basement. Jeez, it was horrible. Damn hose chewers. Yeah, that yeah, was fucking brutal, man. Oh, we used to have they had bad problems back in Louisiana when it, they would harvest the sugar cane in the fall. We would be overrun with field mice, and they literally ate the inside out of a piano that we had. Not, of course, before dancing across it in the middle of the night for days on end, you know, in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, that's fun to wake up to in the middle of the night. Well, All right, who's the fucking ghost with fucking jokes? <laughs> I've had, we've had cats for like the last 20 years, always like one or two, and the one time we had about a 10-year period where we had this cat that was a Maine Coon. His name was Dutch. He was really the most amazing cat ever. Yeah, Maine Coons are awesome. We had no mice. He would have to go outside and even travel a small distance because I don't think any lived like within like a quarter mile of our house. He was he was definitely gone for a while before he got back with a corpse. It was just uh, the killer of killers. Yeah, well they're hu they're huge cats and they have like these yeah. massive paws. <laughs> he was over twenty pounds. Oh, for sure. That's not that's not unheard of at all. And he had a huge big mane too. It was incredible. He was a great cat. Really liked him. He, he, you got to hear how this cat died, and people were always like, oh, your poor cat. He died. First, coyotes tricked him because they're very tricky, and they got him to get into the forest, and then they attacked him and ate most of him. And then a bald eagle came and grabbed his, like, leftovers and flew him out of my neighborhood, which was witnessed by the person that told me it happened after they saw a picture of, of Dutch and me asking if anyone had seen him. So he got killed by coyotes and then finished off by uh, scavenger birds, bald eagle. Crazy. It's a pretty epic way to go. And people would say, oh, oh, your poor cat. And I'd be like, listen, that poor cat was a murderous beast. He would kill baby birds. He would kill. I couldn't contain him. If I let him outside, he was just killing every time he went outside. So live by the gun, die by the gun. Don't feel yeah. bad when it's all said and done. Yeah. What's that, Sun Tzu, leave by the sword, die by the sword? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's the way it goes sometimes. A little shout out to Dutch. Dutch was a father on Father's Day. He had some kittens. <laughs> he had two kittens? <laughs> no, I think he had eight or whatever. Eight in total. At least he didn't eat them, right? Exactly. No, he didn't. In fact, we kept one. We named him Tripper. I'll never forget this. You'll laugh at this, Todd. I named his son Tripper. That was his name. And my first email address for my business was Dutch Tripper. And people would be like, fuck Bubble Man. He's some play on Mila because she's like the hash queen in Amsterdam and she takes psychedelics. I'm like, my email has nothing to do with Mila. What are you talking about? It's Dutch Tripper at Hotmail. They're my cats. These are the ways that people create... Um, their own reality. And there's Tony in the Blue River Harborside Bubble Man brand booth. Nice to see Tony. I'm glad that it's not loud and obnoxious. Apparently they're not allowed to play loud music at the Cannabis Cup this year, which is 
it was a lot better, needless to say, than last year when you couldn't walk it's, down the it's aisle. It's the Harborside here. crew. You guys are all live, live on Hash Church. Yeah. Who's representing Prana? Okay. Who's re re representing the Harborside fam? Father's Day. It's the day we take the championship as well. Warriors. Bay Area. Here's a friend. What's up, Gold Drop? Here, put your headsets on. I got dual headsets. Just like I said, Bubble Man. Noise canceling. Oh, my God. You know, Todd, that's got to put a smile on your face. Noise Boom. Muted. I Boom. really dig it, bro. How's it going? Can you here? hear it? Yeah. Hello? Can you hear him? Yes, we can hear you. Welcome to Hash Church. Damn, it hey. worked. What's going on? It's Joe with Gold Drop. Yeah, nice. dude, see your booth in the background. It looks like a beautiful day in California. That never yeah, it was happened. an amazing day. We're giving out free sunscreen, medicated sunscreen. Look at this guy. Since it's just bright day. There's not a cloud in the sky. Oh, so. this is a good product. This is what you were telling me about. That's the way That's pretty dope. That's pretty cool. You're Look giving that away for free? Yeah. Oh. Hook people up with something they can use. Medicated sunscreen. That's got to be a first. This is the Gold Drop Air, Bo Air Balloon... balloon. Uh, ride between the Bubble Man booth and the Gold Drop. Air Pusher. It's Air Pusher? Burning Man art car. Okay. Burning Man art car. Very cool. The fuck <laughs> Burning Man <laughs> That's it's fucking wild. It's awesome. not inflated today. Yesterday it was inflated. They have an actual balloon above it. Oh. Yeah, we're get yeah, we're getting set up still. All right. Um, get that balloon. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people, it was pretty funny. They were uh, asking us if we were charging for dabs. And I was like, charging for dabs? No, that's why we come out here, so you can try all the stuff. Are people charging for dabs? Yep. Oh. That's incredible. It's it's against the Bubble Man brand and against my... You're going to have my own, one my own own lineup. better intentions. Uh, dabs? To give cred, there was a lot of people giving out um, very, very, very much free dabs when we were walking around yesterday. Everybody was being... I saw a lot of people being very generous. There wasn't a heavy crowd there. At first, and everyone I walked up to was, I didn't. No one really offered to sell me dabs, but and I've um, never heard of it. To be honest, I've never. Um, I heard, I heard of it a little bit, and uh, I mean, it wasn't a lot. It wasn't a lot, but people were asking us if we were because we were, uh, because we were actually. Uh, I don't know. They were just like, "You're not charging." I'm like, "No, who is?" And they're like, "Oh, people are." I'm like, "It's so weird." Was that Gold Coast you were across the way from? Yeah, that was Gold Coast over there by Gold Coast, and uh, it looks like um, Advanced Nutrients with their Bud Candy, and uh, there's DNA down there. I'm gonna be doing like a bunch of uh, interviews for um, the DOD show, so I'll be I'll be sure to interview like uh, Gold Drop and uh, DNA Genetics. Um, Go say hi to DNA for us at one point. Yeah. We could go over there. Come on. Yeah, go, go over there. Little. Those guys are always comedies. Oh. I didn't see Don Aaron there, uh, yesterday. No? Uh, no. No, I didn't we were see gonna give, uh We were going to give them a little something. Let's see what's up. Do they keep out boots and not, ha and not be there? Possibly. No, yeah. Possibly. I, I didn't see them there yesterday. Hey, uh, Carter, just watch all this busy, stuff. Busy, busy. That's Can you for give sure. me uh, Leroy OG? Okay, Leroy OG can you get me a Leroy o OG? Hey, can you pass me a Leroy OG as well, please? Yeah, I'm and gonna what, get him a little. I'm gonna try and to what get What makes it? What makes it a Leroy anyway? Well, to be honest with you, it was a uh, cultivar from uh, Rare Dignes from Scott. So it was a Leroy OG that uh, that uh, he puts out, and it's his, I think it was his uncle or great grandfather. He named it after that, and it's like an R. I think it's like a Scott's OG cross with some kind of cush of some kind. It's real. It's actually really good. It's one of my favorites. We have a cornbread OG from him and a Leroy OG. So, uh, you know, give credit where credit's due. It's really good genetics. So, I like it. It's like a vanilla yeah. OG. It is super dead there. Was it like that yesterday? No, I came early. Yet. I came early, so it could. Yeah, it hasn't started no, yet. It opens at noon, so they're just oh, there early. But yeah, gonna... yesterday it was rather light, and today it'll probably be lighter because it's Father's Day. Yeah. Well, we'll come back to them. We'll get a little interview with uh, all these cats. 
you know, Good. with DNA Lounge. It's not too bad. Damn, I have that same furniture on my deck. Oh yeah, look at that. They got it all. Pimped, they got it all pimped out in here. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna come back. Uh, I'm gonna interview the Honey Pot. There's some crew from the from the uh, North Cal that I'm friends with. Got a lot of respect for them, and you know, there's a lot of people that I want to get to uh, today to actually get some uh, interviews from. See what's up. They make a really good topical out of lip balm and Honey Pot and stuff. Awesome. This is the man. Okay. What's up? Uh, good morning. How you good doing? morning. How are you doing? Good. Good to see you, bro. How you doing? Good to see you. You're live on Hash Church. I'm going to interview you later. Yeah. I'm going to come back later. I'm doing, I'm doing a new a new show that will uh, capture on you. But uh, yeah, I, I thought this was a perfect time to do this because of the noise. Oh, yeah. Check it out. There's the chapsticks. These things are awesome. All right. I'll take one. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Perfect yes. for today. Nice. The, uh, you know, that's what a lot of it is about. This one was, I think this is pretty good. The North Cal Bay Area, like, this vibe's pretty good. I feel like somehow between, like, when you look at the Emerald Cup and and the North Cal situation, it seems to be a little different vibe than Southern California completely, you know? Yeah, that's for sure. Hmm. But uh, check this out. Art car to a CHR booth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... This has cookies. This has uh, about two mils of cookies in it. The Dyson. <laughs> oh, yeah. This Dyson Ultra Sonic Humidifier will start pumping out cookies. Smell this. This is cookies in this your face, This is what I was dude. talking oh, about wow. earlier. This is the, the facial I got. It's a, so what happens, this will kick on, and then moisture will start spitting out, you know, like a humidity. It's going to go automatic, and then it's going to give you a facial. This is this was a big hit yesterday. That's there's awesome. a new there's a new hashtag Terp Facial. <laughs> oh yeah, we said that yesterday. I was like waiting for it. You put can you can you smell that? You gotta be like it should kick on. Oh, no, I smell now it. Now it's coming, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, Facebook cookies. Now it's cookies coming. in your face, dude. Yeah, he's got a Terp Facial. <laughs> <laughs> he just got a Terp Facial. Terp smile. It's hard not to smile. Let me tell you, it smells really good. Actually, Bubble Man, the line was so long yesterday that I was like, put your face, get yourself a terp, a terp facial. If you get a terp facial and you don't, uh, and you don't have a smile when you come up back out of there, just get out of line. Just don't, don't, even, don't even get in line. You know. Wow. What's up, brother? Good, bro. I have shirt. You did? Yeah, Good. Good. Did you get yourself a 73 or a Bubble Man shirt? Yeah. I told you to do that yesterday. Okay. Yep. I got a Bubble Man shirt yesterday. Yeah, well, you, you got one of those. Oh, shit. Get... Look who it is. Press Get one of those other ones. See, he he showed up in Bubble Man shirt. Press it had... in the house. What up, buddy? You're on Hash Church. Oh, oh. How's everybody doing today? Good, man. Nice shirt. Uh, it's nice to see these familiar friends that I like met over the years in different countries. Very cool. Let's go up on top. Yeah, no, these are guys that we met like organically through different uh, experiences in uh, like Jamaica and Spain, and these are people that were hardcore uh, committed to uh, Full Melt and mad respect for Bubble Man and the brand. So it made sense to bring people on that like showed you that type of respect, you know? Hey, and we got a little visitor here in Hash Church. Hello there. Hi. Hey. Who's the visitor? Oh, look at this. Hi. Oh, nice. right. We're going to cut off. Let me show you what's going on here so I can get them to. Are you going to swimming lessons soon? You guys are muted. Let me unmute you. For some reason, Alexander, let me see. There we go. Now I can hear you. No, no, you're still muted. That's weird. Try to unmute yourself. No, you guys got muted. I'm not sure what happened there. Technical difficulties. You might have to shut the browser and come back in. I'm not sure. Might be uh, the plug on your headphones, but we just can't hear you, and it shows that you're unmuted. Oh, that was the clicking sound. No. How about now? Now I can hear you. There we Hi. Go. Well, hello there, little lady. No, this is Damien. This is my son. Oh. <laughs> he just hello, got back from school lessons, and he got a donut. 
Oh. And he got a new badge too, yeah. And are you about to take your dad away for Father's Day? <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. spend I'm gonna spend Father's Day with my boys and my daughter as well. I have two boys and one girl. Wow. Is that cool, buddy? Yes. Yes. Look, yeah. look at the camera. Say hello to everyone. <laughs> Say yo, what's up? Bananas. Bananas. <laughs> Bananas are up. It's true. It's true. Well, we've, been talking, we've been talking about how great your daddy is today. We've been calling your dad a hero. We've been talking about Gwenny and Gwenny's medicine. <laughs> hey, hey, don't punch. I really want to punch him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a karate man. Hey, sometimes you got to punch your old man in the face. You know, it happens. <laughs> Karate Man. <laughs> Karate Man brews on the inside. He's a quarter blood technique. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, that'll do it. That'll do it. Staying strong. Staying strong. <laughs> You're getting me. Yeah. All right, go eat your donut, buddy. My boy would be doing the same thing. Go eat your donut. I love you. Uh, he'd be giving me the whops. Oh, yeah. He likes to uh, Karate Man. So he's he's just back from swimming or going to swimming? He looked like he was just at swimming. Yeah, he just got back from swimming lessons, and now we're going to go swimming at uh, just swimming, swimming. Oh, nice. Double swimming. I guess he's a real fan of swimming, huh? Yeah, well, you know, you got to do the swimming lessons, and uh, then we got to go see uh, my dad to, uh, to say Happy Father's Day and go swimming there. Oh, very nice, very nice. Well, it sounds like you got a good day planned out for yourself. I'm definitely looking forward to finding out what's going to be going on here for Father's Day in the very near future. Probably do a little bit more of, uh, yeah, Tony's just doing the rounds there at the Cup. It's kind of nice to see. It is actually nice to see before they open because, man, I don't know, like, those Cups do get pretty busy. Spanibus gets insanely busy. I don't even... I can't even film when I'm at Spanibus anymore. It's just so busy of an event. Well, I'm going to kind of just kind of get ready and get out of here, and I might stop by if you're there and say hello. And I'm going to say goodbye to Hass Church and Happy Father's Day to everybody who's a father. And, of course, my dad. Happy Father's Day to him. And everybody else out there, peace, and I will see you guys next week. Awesome, John. Have a good one. We'll see you uh, in a little bit, unless I text you otherwise, because I may very well end up out on an adventure with my family and leave the house, so I'll let you know. Right, buddy. Peace, man. Have a good day, everybody. Awesome. You too. Hey, um, real quick, I wanted to let you know that I actually did have a photographer borrow the, the, the 5D3 and take great candid pictures yesterday, Bubble Man. Oh, nice. Yeah, and then today I'm doing the videos and uh, lots of all kinds of uh, videos for the, uh, the DOD show. But um, I feel you, bro. I sat down at 11 o'clock and I didn't get up till 8. Is that the island girl? Yeah, I wanted to show you. This is what Gold... So Gold Drop, a lot of people don't know, Gold Drop cultivates a lot of the flowers that we run that they also put in their pens and their extracts and concentrates. That's why I really like working with them because it's kind of a through and through process and we get to con have a lot of more control over the process, but that's their island girl they entered. Very cool. Really good. good. I like the island girl. Uh, not a big yielder in terps. Not, <laughs> not, not huge, but, but huge in potency. But huge in taste and potency. Yeah. It's unusual. And then yeah, you enter the devil's cookies. Look at that. Blessed. Feeling blessed. Oh, there's the devil's cookies. Devil's cookies. Can you see that all right? Yep. Cool. You can go in the sun. That thing's pretty uh, pretty nice. Your camera doesn't focus that close, Tony. If you back it up a bit. There How you about go. now? Yep. Yep. Okay, that's good to know the distance. Thank you for that. It's about two feet away for things. What else did you enter? Um... I like the fact that you enter flowers and concentrate, so it shows that you're... Well, this is the ACDC crystal we won with. Okay, that's the winner from last time. Can you guys see this? You can... Let's see if they can be see good this. In the... You got the barely. Okay, hold on. Can you see it now? Mm-hmm. 
This is the actual. That's the 99% crystallite after we evaporate all the terpenes off. This is the. Oh, wow. You've been holding out on me, bro. Yeah. This is the actual uh, <laughs> ACDC crystallite. <laughs> he hands me that little bowl, and then he hands me this. I'm like, yeah, you're definitely holding out on me. So this is the uh, ACDC uh, one that we won the cup with last time with those terpenes that you have, Bubble Man. Uh, it's real yellow, huh? Yeah, it's like the one we entered was like a little lighter. And what happens is as these terpenes evaporate, it goes from this yellow to this like clear, like crystals. So instead of using like butane to make those crystallites, we're using terpenes, which is a god awful amount. And the only way to do that is really honestly grow your own ACDC, and that's what Cold Drop does. Sure. So, I mean, that's what it comes down to. I don't grow yeah, anymore. Yeah, so. the, the crystals grow out of this, actually. And then uh, the, the terpenes and THC, and it's still a little CBD, it runs off in, in a runnier fraction of it. And we can literally pour out most of it to cut for the separation. And then, so you still have the terpenes? Yeah, with the terpenes. We still have them. That's what we loaded into the ACDC vape pens. And they were more of a, like a 3 to 1 ratio, which is much more... Interesting. So you, so the terpenes we did, we run that. You're telling me that turns into crystal, and then the, the, the liquid crystal comes, like, grows, out, grows of out of it, and then the terpenes themselves are still intact. They don't evaporate off. No, they don't evaporate off. We can keep the terpenes. Get yeah. the hell out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't tell me that part. No, that's uh, well to grow the crystal. This requires less terpenes. We lose a little bit of evaporation, uh, but most of it's still there. Most of it's <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, we we should uh, once once the process did starts. You get tests, you don't need anything did else. you get tests of each stage? Um, yeah, this one tested in like seventy percent C B D. Okay. Uh, seven, like high seventy, seventy eight, uh, ten percent THC. The crystals that Yeah, that crystal, clear one. Uh, that tested at uh, ninety one percent C B D. Okay. Three and three quarters THC and four percent terpenes. And you've tested the, the as we would call it, runoff, the terp runoff. The terp runoff uh, <laughs> was like 40% terpenes, 50% terpenes, uh, and about 20%. Really wow, crazy. interesting. That's interesting. And that's what goes in the cart. Yeah, that gets mixed in with the cart. No oh, shit. Yeah. Look at you, Joe. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I find that... Uh, there's something definitely interesting about the CBD uh, terpenes versus the other ones because you've tried. We've tried this with about 20 different ones. You don't do this. It doesn't crystallize with anything else, does it? Um, no, not really. I mean, we've, we've tried with other terpenes, but uh, we've kind of mostly focused on doing. We have the ACDC. AC yeah, we have a lot of it, and we're keeping the single plant together. Uh, but yeah, that's good. We we've, we've tried mm -hmm. mixing terpenes with. Combinations of CBD and THC um, for one of our other entries, uh, but not. We haven't really tried crystallizing with any other Yeah, no, we tried something with purple uh, punch and it didn't. Yeah, that had more THC in it. That was a good one to one. Because that's what we were kind of. Okay. But, you know, once you have the individual components, it's like you can create ratios, but still keeping the general broad spectrum of those individual components coming in. They're not completely isolated. Yeah. Uh, so CBD is a pure CBD. It's got all these other components in it. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Where's the uh, pens? Because I remember we did something with you on that. Oh, yeah. We did like. Uh, by the way, he's giving out free shirts. Uh, free sunscreen, free sunglasses, all kinds of like gear. School. Okay, so these are trip pens. Yeah. So these so, are three entries we did. The job. I had I had like five questions on Instagram about this because people don't realize that we're not cutting this at all. There's no, no, PG, no cut. PG. No PG. No VG. No wicking agents. Pure cannabis products. Uh, it, it's. See this in the light. Yeah, it looks really pretty. Cannabinoids and the turbines. Which one is this? This one is the jaw cookies, which okay. is amazing. And then the, the grower, well, John Nettics, right, right over across there. from us, I'll uh, them I gave too. him the cart, and he was just blown away. I mean, he cultivates it and has the thread it, uh, and he was blown away by the representation of the flower. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, the crew didn't want to sell them. They wanted to take <laughs> their shorts Of course, that's what happens. 
what happens every time I get my hands on them. Exactly. The Hawaiian Gold, another one of their cultivars. Okay, cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna get them on yeah, camera yeah, later, film their buds. This is, I remember we ran this one was crazy. Medusa. This, this is the other one that we did with Rolling Hill Farms. Yeah, so we have a new one coming out uh, that we're gonna send to Canada, but it's Medusa. So good. And it's um it's candy lane and cherry pie bubble man. It's like killer combination. Killer killer combo called Medusa. Uh, bread from seed. Yeah. Oh yeah, man, that came out so much better after it like sat there. Yeah, it smelled it through the keeps. cartridge. Jeez. All right, well I used up a lot of your guys' time, so I'll, I'm gonna go back to mute and uh, we'll get ready and keep it live while we dab. Um, Danny Danko said he was gonna come by, and if he comes by, I'll switch over and get him on as well. Just really cool. Little... Sounds great with the headphones. This is it. Really works out. Yeah, that Thank was excellent. You. Excellent job there, Tony. I'm super surprised. I, but, you know, I followed the lead of my uh, peers, and thank you for the suggestions. Yeah, dude, I'm surprised, too. It's great that, it's, that it sounds as good as it does with the headphones and stuff. Good idea to film or go around early when, uh, when a lot of conversation wasn't happening. It was really only when... Another conversation was happening fairly close by that you could, uh, you know, hear a little bit about that. Otherwise, it was pretty damn good sound. I'm definitely really nice to not have deafening music, right? Oh my god, dude! And that was the thing with the music. It was like I'm gonna play louder, more deafening music than you're playing. <laughs> Gave me a headache. And then tossed in the prize wheel, the giveaway wheel. You know, the old like. That's like potentially the most obnoxious thing about any show that I've ever experienced. Those damn giveaway wheels. But hey, it is what it is. It is the cannabis community. I think it being 12 now, and us having done a solid three hours of hash church. I think I'm very much excited to release everyone their duties of hash church panelist for the day and allow them to go forth and you know, get in touch with your old man if you're not rocking kids. Or think about him if you if he's gone, and if you've got your kids, obviously go spend your Father's Day with them. And uh, huge thanks to Alexander for coming on and sharing his story. I hope that uh, your daughter just keeps getting better and better and better. And uh, I hope that your journey is uh, it continues in a in a in a beautifully unfolding way. In a in in the sense of getting these uh, studies going, and in the sense of getting doctors educated, so other parents don't have to, you know, take the amount of time that you had to take no. to get that done. So thanks for coming on Hash Church and sharing your story with us. Thanks for having me. I got. I'm gonna have to split because Gwenny's awake. Here hey, she is. hello, Gwenny. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, Sal? That's a great way to finish Hash Church. Yeah, the Gwenny. With Gwenny hey. herself sharing hey, hey. an appearance. You've got lots of viewers, Gwenny. They're all rooting for you, and they all uh, have nothing but love for you. So I hope you have a great Father's Day with hey. you. You want to break the computer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always uh, that's always fun. My son's always hammering on the keys. <laughs> that's good. All right, guys, I got to go. Uh, I got both kids here now. Uh, thanks for having me very much, and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you guys again soon. Thanks for being here, man. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. Rock and roll. Happy Father's Day to you. Thanks, Happy Father's Happy Day, Father's man. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Okay, Gwenny. <laughs> awesome. The rest of the guys, Chimera, Etienne, Skunkman Sam, Mark Scaldone, Todd McCormick, Tony V with all the boys, Joseph and uh, Preston, about to dab off the egg. I think this is a great way to end church with uh, with Mr. O'Connor, just cleaning off the dish there and getting ready for the next one. And uh, happy Father's Day to everyone that's out there watching. But if you've just got a father or if you've just got some kids and a father, celebrate it. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Thanks, everyone, for uh, celebrating Hash Church 91 with us. We will see you next week. Peace.